it's it kind of experimenting with playing ring with a lower mana curve in general, which of course is interesting when you're drawing a lot of cards, getting to use those cards. This deck is, it's a weird one. Uh, but, you know, I, I've definitely been thinking for a long time that in these like kind of power conduit mid-range shells, power conduit plays really well with Fable, and it plays really well with Urza Saga, removing the counter using these modes over and over again. But you need like you need like one more good card to play with it. And it does play well with the ring where you get to mitigate this life loss by peeling the counter off, putting a plus one counter somewhere in this build if you want, or um, you know, just a charge counter if you have no other targets. Uh, and I also think it's interesting when you're one ringing and you're just drawing a bunch of galvanic blast and lightning bolts. Like you get to use these, of course, as removal spells early, and then when you're going crazy with one ring, you're going to draw a lot of cards. And we also have one manifold key as a tutor target that can untap the ring, untap power conduit, but can also um, uh, make Ragavan unblockable, make Urza Saga unblockable. I do think that Shadow Spear is pretty important in um, in this build for the life gain. Although I haven't been playing it in all of my uh, saga lists lately. I forgot to add Gigantha. Didn't want to play a league with no Gigantha. Yeah, basically always just mounted monkey hold bobble. Sweet hand on the play. I'm confused as to why one ring goes in red green power conduit. Um, so, so like one thing, this is a deck that can like pretty easily afford to play a key to untap ring for like lots of value as an Urza Saga target. Um, it also like just draws a ton of cards and you get to throw a lot of like bolts at your opponent, which is kind of an interesting dynamic as well. Wow, we hit our opponent with a Ragavan. Okay, and then um, the integrity of this league is saved because we're up against Living End again. Um, integrity saved. And there's a good chance I just want to loot both these in the graveyard for the living in next turn, so I'll play the bobble if this doesn't get forced. Maybe play the bobble anyways, try to hit my land. Oh, same opponent, that's funny. Alright, so they pitched two cards so far, it's time pitching living in. Like, immediately takes a fable. Three cards in their hands. Cycles Oliphant to get a mountain. They get a Steam Vents as their mountain of choice. Forge New Frodo, Bor Determined Hero fits in the Boros Stoneblade. I would think I'd rather play like a Forge New instead if I was going to play one, but I'm not honestly a big fan of either. Yeah, new card alert. Yeah, I think the green or blue one are better because they can get you your basics, but what do I know? Okay, this is a big deal, letting me loot away these two. I guess I would have Ragavan away too. And just go to combat. Still probably can't win. Maybe discarding both channelers would have given me a better chance. Um, I guess I don't... Do I want Delirium right now? I can double block the Grief, potentially. They have eight. I mean, this is larger than charge. Atta and it, oh, this is... 16. Yeah, I do kind of need to double block this. Let's just ping them. I don't really know how we could possibly win, though. Well, maybe a bit easier to win if my opponent plays super scared like this. I guess it's also probably better to kill this guy. I guess maybe I, I, I should have bobbled myself. Even like criticize the opponent for doing not earlier. And this have the battle shell with invasion of Ergamon and invasion of. I mean, I, I personally only like invasion of Ergamon if you're like trying to tutor invasion of Alara. I'm not a big fan of that card outside of that plan. Most cowardly living in uh, <laughs> play. Mm -hmm. 
Two, two. The Shadow Spear. Oh, it's interesting draw. So I think that I'm probably just going to go make a token. Make a token, get a manifold key. Pick up Saga, play Saga, copy Construct, attack with two five fives. And I can either blast a Curator if they chump block. I can blast a Curator if they chump block, or... I guess a Shadow Spear is maybe better than Key. Although Key kind of like makes it look like I'm trying to get Vigilance. I don't know how much that matters. I don't think either is really that different. They definitely have Violent Outburst in hand. Maybe. I mean, like, I, this isn't like a play around anything kind of game. This isn't lethal. Not if my opponent double chumps. You want a spear? I can't I can't make a second contract equ equip spear and then attack. Conduit on battles is like infinite counters to take off. It's like it's not infinite, it's one counter a turn. It's so slow. I don't know, I'm not I'm not that into it. I, it doesn't sound very good to me, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah, they also have lethal with the violent outburst, right? Third test three shield. Yeah, we played two leagues, we went seven three. I liked it. I, I would maybe play one less shield, but I, I would also still maybe play four. I guess I should target this construct actually. Getting with the Ragavan too, I think. Sadly one point short if they do have the violent outburst, but what can you do? Ooh, generous int. How did Inky go? Oh, it did actually pretty good yesterday, I thought. This block implies another living end. Yeah, hopefully it's Charlotte's I mean, I was dead to a violent outburst just pumping last turn. Like, my opponent has definitely, like, you know, fumbled the bag a lot this game, and so it's okay if, you know, if they win anyways, since it's, you know, we probably would be losing this match at the, this game at the Pro Tour. Peregrine and Clock of Omens could work in modern cookbook. So I played Clock of Omens and Cookbook combo a few times. Um, Peregrine being, um, well, allowing you to be like potentially mono green is interesting as opposed to like Salt Eye, but, um, or like, or like just two colors instead of like the three color food decks. Definitely gonna work on it. Does Goldberry have a place in a power conduit shell? I mean, I like Goldberry, but she's more of like a Coco combo card, I think. Yeah, I'll face plus Ren. Well, I've already activated Ren this turn. I had to activate Ren to get my Saga back, so I uh, I am not not missing the obvious five damage right now. Okay, we didn't get Violent Outburst. Bursted. Yeah, we, we were like just super dead if they just didn't play so scared. And they're attacking me and not the Ren and Six. Um, so I think they're just going to cast the Charlotte's Agent, and then I'm going to blast them down to one, and then ping, or ping them. Although now they are holding up fours, which there's not much we can do about if that's their last card. Besides top deck something. What a game. Don't think we would have won this at the Pro Tour. That's okay though, I've been, you know, I punt plenty too. <laughs> You're gonna bring these in, and then we can play bring in a might for possible ley lines. A trim a Ren and a power conduit and bobble. It's fine. Maybe not bobble. Maybe just two two Rens. Doesn't the four cycler give food? Um. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Mobius with its gifted sub. Uh oh. <laughs> the Spectrum command still unzips me. I still think every time I see it that <laughs> the internet, the stream is crashing. Ugh, that was such a rough time. I think we went through food since we had DC unblockable with key then ping. Oh yeah, that's sick. Yeah, the unblockable and key is like really fun in this in this build. I wish we could. I wish there was room for Tarmogoyf. I just don't think that like you want to cut Goy for uh, power conduit fable. Ring, ring, any, of, any of the other cards in the deck. Try the ring and the mono white restoration of Enganjo. Maybe there. I, I haven't. I I don't. I was winning so much with that deck when I was first playing it, and I just feel like I can't win with it anymore. I use I use AT and T now. Back when I was at the apartment, Spectrum was the only ISP I could use, and thankfully, I've got like AT and T fiber internet. I'm very happy with two life, one bolt, one blast. Yeah, maybe, maybe. 
Although I do like the idea of like like at least that we're testing the idea of like just being able to draw a bunch of one mana burn spells when you ring. I think that 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 dynamic is kind of cool. I mean, you definitely want Graveyard Hate and Ragavan against Living In, so we'll keep this despite it being a one lander. Wondering in Fiddlebender. Well, it is kind of bad that um, you only get the protection if you cast the ring. Devil Whale will give you creatures minus two minus. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's okay. I think you're probably right though. Opponent is uh, on the in the tank on their Mulligan decision. If the third Saga trigger goes in the stack, remove a counter to save it. Yeah, yeah so that, that's how the combo works. You use Power Conduit to remove the counter in response to that third trigger going on the stack. You still get the Saga's ability of that turn, um, and you get to keep your Saga too. It's a pretty cool combo. And then some opponents timing out. I don't know if there's like Magic Online crashing. I feel like I've had more opponents doing this lately. Is there any card I could see on top of my library with Bobble that would... I don't, I don't think there's any card I could see that would make me not just play Ragavan turn one. So we'll just get info from their hand. Watch the new Rimmy. I have it now. Can. You could just search and keep Saga and play. Yeah, I mean, that's that's why we have four power conduits. Um, You get you get to, like, make a token with Saga and search something every turn. It's pretty pretty good. Oh, we have a Waker of Waves, not like the most relevant card to know about. Rob with the 15, and not the least, I guess. And then on top of their library, they have a Foundation Breaker, which is a really good card to know about. Okay, well, not the most interesting turn. Very nice to naturally draw both of our... Um, Oh, yeah, we get to snipe this, too. That's also really good. Is there new stuff? Yeah, we have four copies of the One Ring in this deck. Cycling for a Mountain. Interesting. Let's exile the Riverwinder. This, these are Galvanic Blastable. Although, I guess we're, like, almost... We're always exiling their whole graveyard, I guess. Pig, 20 months, thank you. Come back. Shocking and Steam Vents. And then Concedes. <laughs> okay. Weird game, didn't draw the One Ring. So if they had um, Force of Negation, they would force that instead of the Lantern. John with the Church Prime, thank you, thank you. Yeah, shout out to Gigantha. Okay, opponents on a mulligan to six. Let's keep a second fable, I guess. Wandering has been really good so far. I've been liking it a lot. Windswept Teeth, Zogoth Triome. No Gigantha. Be blue white control. Sometimes they play one copy of Heath or two copies of Heath. I think that I'd like to go Urza Saga plus Fable next turn. Let's just play a land. No, seems like I was wrong and they're, they are a more domain focused deck. So they could be domain zoo without Gigantha. Is Wondering looking good outside of Shells of Power Conduit? I mean, we it, it look at the, the mono black deck. I liked it a lot. I don't know that I've cast a One Ring How's the Royal Scions matchup, huh? I don't know if Castorig and like not liked it yet. One Ring is overrated. I actually like. I even would say, despite how hyped I am about it, I think there's a good chance it's still underrated. I know a little wild to say. I was not expecting them to go Royal Scions discard Scion. Oh wait, they're playing Scion Tribal. Now it makes sense. <laughs> Scion Tribal. <laughs> Eight Scion. <laughs> Modern League Pro Tour testing. Yeah, thankfully <laughs> there are other places to test. Okay, pending, and then maybe they'll bolt the Shaman. I don't know. Maybe a Rockrick deck? Yeah, only a Rockrick player would choose to play Royal Scions. You know what I mean? Uh, let's uh, let's just go to combat. 
Oh, wow. Was not really expecting this to just attack. I do think in this kind of matchup, um... Saga tokens are really good, so let's just make a couple Saga tokens. Okay, I can't come in and blast that now. I have a team for the PT. CFB plus. Didn't realize how mid the Scions were. Yeah, we used to play this card some, like, in pre-Modern Horizons 2 Modern. <laughs> it was kind of interesting in some Mystic Sanctuary builds. This was also pre Unholy Heat too, so like it was it was pretty resilient, but never been a card I've been crazy about either. Okay, uh, probably just get a bobble here. Yeah, yeah, Death Shadow is, a th is like a one of those. Those are good times. Yeah, same set as Oko. Both three mana planeswalkers that didn't die to fry. Um, I think I'm gonna save the bobble. I may want to keep it for just plus one, plus one for now. Definitely relevant against this fury. Oh, I guess they can just go two. They can go three. No, they can't go through one. Yeah. So we'll keep the bobble for now because we would love to just draw any artifact, including. The artifact, huh? Well, gonna be a really hard game to lose. <laughs> My opponent definitely made some bad decisions, though, I think. Like, they probably should just cast Scion, play Bolt, rather than play the Royal Scions, you know? Team Wreck with Snap and Flame of Anor. Um, I, I want to believe. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I I want to believe. We'll try to do. We'll try to play Snap Flame of Anor this week. Any consideration on Holy Heat? Well, I like I like on Holy Heat a lot in this kind of show. But the thinking is that since you're drawing so many cards off one ring, and this is maybe not maybe he would also be fine to draw. But I like kind of like the idea of just like banking on being able to draw a lot of burn spells uh, and just blasting your opponent. Which is like a bit harder to do if you're on Galvanic Blast plus Heat. Um, so I thought about doing like 4 Blast, 2 Bolt, 2 Heat or something like that. That could be fine. Um, I thought about just playing Heat over Bolt or Heat over Blast. But I think I just want to try all Burn Spells first. And then kind of incrementally add more Heats as time goes on. Shrubbing Blast is Uh I don't think, I think not for this build. You also have Power Conduit to peel the counters off the ring. You have Shadow Spear for a lot of life. Draw 2. Speaking of Shadow Spear. Well, I think I'm just going to... Well, yeah, no, I should, I should equip. I should definitely equip. But I can put a plus 1 counter um, in combat. They concede instead of double jumping, though. And we go to game 2 on the draw against... A weird version of Domain Zoo with Omnath and Royal Scions. Or Might kills Leyline Binding, which is not a card we saw. I don't know if they're playing Ren and Six. They they should be, but I know their, their deck is probably just a little bit too weird. Let's maybe not sideboard weirdly enough, and then all this time I'm saving by not sideboarding the use the restroom. Uh, Master thing with five months. Welcome back. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. What's up? It's me, okay. your friend, Aspiring Spike. On the draw. All right, we're playing against uh, <laughs> whatever this is. Going to keep my opponents on a multi six. Hundred times they have to reprint Soul Ring. I mean, listen, those Soul Ring reprints are keeping us in business, huh? <laughs> It's an EDH player's world, we're just living in it. Why no Besagian deck? Bes we have too many red cards for Besagio, I think. It's like, we have 16 one-mana red spells. It's so awkward to draw Besagio and like need it for mana. 
Um, it, it could it could be correct to play it, but it's like it's like in this deck, the Seiju is mostly a waste that can like also cast Rin and Six and also has the channel ability. You know, one of the one of the worst uh, red decks that could could be interested in the Seiju I've played or red green decks. This deck seems like a worse ring deck than Mono Black Coffers deck. Uh, maybe it's maybe the the ring is probably worse here, but um, the the overall card quality is also higher here. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic, right? But also, uh, let me cook. <laughs> All right, gonna get sold by the Kavus. I guess I need to draw the ring, so let's play to that by playing our Fable this turn. We're gonna try the ring in four color. Uh, at some point, sure. Like, at, at the very, oh, they forced? Okay, let's go to game three. Well, I guess I'll draw the ring, because I'll draw the ring. Um, it's on my list of things to do. At, at the very least, like, I know a lot of people are doing that. You know, this is like kind of a, it's it's not gonna be that exciting of a shell for me to work on. It is gonna be a good shell. I will I do want to work on it, but it's like not the highest priority either. Just because I think a lot a lot of people are gonna be doing that. Okay, I don't have a I don't have a um, spring leaf drum to go like token bolt blast chump block. So I think we'll just mulligan. Or sorry, just concede. Maybe chub block with Ragavan, that turns fine, but led to a lot of things. The ring just feels like a Toski that can't attack and deal self damage. This is a funny evaluation of the ring. Awesome, Kanta, that's exciting. But yeah, I, I'll definitely play the, four, the ring in four color. I, I think that tomorrow I'll probably take a break from ringing since we've been doing it like two days straight. Although maybe we do three day, like two and a half days of ringing and then play different, like ha a, a non ring deck on Thursday and. Non ring decks on Friday. Toski's like kind of a, we a, a weirdly good card to compare the ring to, though. Right, that's, I think we gotta keep kind of reluctantly here. Yeah, it's like a weirdly good card to compare it to since it's four mana indestructible draws cards. <laughs> I'm gonna upkeep bolts, try to dig for land. Touch land, obviously, ideally because of the, the ring. Ah, oh, shouldn't have bolted. <laughs> no, this is fine. The ring and martyr, it's a perfect fit. <laughs> I mean, I agree. I mean, it's like, it, it is kind of funny. It's like, so many decks, ah, it's a perfect fit for my deck. It draws me a ton of cards and uh, stabilizes the game for me. It's a perfect fit. I don't, um, but I, I do agree, Bob, that it seems like a good fit in martyr. <laughs> Bob, if you bring Martyr to the Pro Tour, I'd be so hyped. That'd be awesome. But also, you bring, you bring the deck you think is best. The One Ring is comparable to Toski. I mean, uh, give me another card that's four mana, indestructible, and draws cards. Draws multiple cards. If I draw a land, do I Fable over Ren? Probably not. Oh, it's a really good draw. What's my favorite ring brew from opponents? I don't know that have we played against one I, I think we just played against Tron with the ring once. Maybe I'm misremembering. We haven't played against a lot of brews yet. Afara? Sure. Yeah, Afara's good good pick. Erbos, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Thoughts of Deep Dwelling. An illustrious list. They always have stub. They have five cards in their hand. Yeah, we'll, we'll be playing uh, Rosie Scurry Oak for sure. I thought four mana cards in modern had to basically win you the game. Yeah, the the ring does <laughs> does do that. <laughs> Usually. I get it. it's just like whenever you're evaluating four mana cards, you have to look at the other playable four mana cards in modern. There aren't that many of them, but those cards are like Yogmoth, Omnath, Karn the Great Creator, Indomitable Creativity. Um, 
kind of it. <laughs> Those are the main ones. And, like, the One Ring is, like, as impactful, if not more impactful, as, as most of those. It's good when you're ahead, it's good when you're behind. There's a lot. Not even Urza anymore? Yeah, Urza ha hasn't been good in a while. Although, like, it's still a card with a lot of potential, I think. Uh, I guess I have to discard the second copy of the One Ring. And died, not drawing the fourth land. Did mill to five this game. possible, but now I'm trying to focus a bit more. But it is, the title is like, you know, mostly clickbait for sure. What's it, a mold of five? The fact that the one ring can legend rule itself. Yeah, I mean, I like, the, the, the one ring being legendary is an upside. <laughs> it's a legitimate upside. I see the word food deck. Uh, it did make the. Oh yeah, if you have a link for the 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 is it signet best five o dump food deck, I would love to look. Okay, they grab a hammer. We're gonna go. I think stomping ground channeler galvanic blast. We could. All, we could. Um. Oh wow. I feel like every time I draw the ring too, I'm like, wow, this is this was the best draw. <laughs> You should only be allowed one ring in your 75. Yeah, but if you do that, then you you allow four because you get to play Karn. So I play Magic when I went to college, come back, everything has changed. Yeah, everything has changed. There are So there are no more Grand Prix as you knew them. There are now Magic Cons, which are actually really, really cool events, but they happen... Um, a lot less frequently than GPs did. So a Magic Con is all, all the Pro Tours are at Magic Con. So Pro Tour Barcelona is going to be Magic Con Barcelona. At those Magic Cons, there is a ton of stuff to do, and in a way that there really like wasn't pre-COVID, there there really is something for everyone at these events. Um, it's kind of close. I think I'm going to bolt the construct. Dreamhack legacy events are like GP. Yeah, yeah, Dreamhack and Magicon are like are like GPs now, but they're 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 different. Also, they're not like exactly the same. Ma Magicons are great. If you can go to a Magicon, I would really recommend going. There's only I think four a year. Um, the next one in the states is in Vegas. There's it's Barcelona then Vegas, and I think those are the last two this year. There's but there's so much going on. Like if you've been to Dreamhack and you've seen like how crazy dream hack is and there's so much going on and there's like so many different like games and blah 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 going on imagine that you had a, a convention that was as big as dream hack but everything is about magic are there side events and such for modern other formats yes like like literally there's any anything that you could want to do is available to do at these magic cons there are pro tour qualifiers which are like really good ev to get into it's like very exciting st uh oh i did the two hammers and that is the second hammer. Damn. Game two. So we get to bring in the explosives, the mites, the pirate spell bomb, and some moons. Always have so many cyber cards in this matchup when you play red green. Uh, I'm going to trim a power conduit. I think I can keep the key in. Babel's pretty bad against hammer usually. Trim two bobbles too. Yeah, Vegas has a hundred thousand dollar seal tournament. There's just everything. Trim rings. Uh I think ring is great in this matchup. Ring ring has gotta be amazing in this matchup. The EV of Vegas limited is pretty bad. Uh I, I would believe that, but still it's a hundred thousand dollar seal tournament. There's also like I, there's like there was a side event at MagicCon Minneapolis, and the secret may be out a little bit, but it was like legitimately like better value than the Pro Tour. They were like the secret layer showdown things where you could win these like I don't even remember like they're like promo fatal pushes and and like promo ragavan and then like the, there were thousands of dollars like the 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 value of these cards was like so high for almost no reason. I think Kiyosabi, Stoney, and Oof, when is the best deck? I mean, there are some ways you could play around it, but, like, 
In, in my by my memory, you really didn't beat um, Stony Silence and Collector Roof that often. I think you had Blast Zone. Um, you had Blast Zone, Nature's Claim, Dismember, but. Or was Collector Roof. I don't think. Collector Roof may not have been legal at the time. But I remember at the team Pro Tour I played on, I had one of the best KCI players playing Modern at that Pro Tour, and the, the, the field was very, very ready to defeat. Very, very ready to defeat um, KCI. You gave me a million dollars. Would you play Ravenous Rat Tribal at the PT? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you won't, <laughs> thankfully. I already have one of these. I'm getting Graveyard One. Be okay to keep. For a billion dollars on a registered blue white? No, I'm not. I'm not smart enough to play blue white at the at the pro tour. Aren't aren't those silly questions? Yeah, they are silly questions. I usually don't like the whole, "Hey, Spike, what's your price to play this or do this?" You know, because nobody's gonna give me a million dollars to play uh, <laughs> ravenous rats at the pro tour. But it's just I don't know, usually a waste of time. You're smart enough, but am I disciplined enough? I think so, yeah. I mean, I've actually... <laughs> I don't know. I, I've, I've been historically a control player at Tournament Magic. Um, and I also play... Tur Tournament Magic is just so different from streaming. You get to focus so much more. It's awesome. We leave them six. We have a, we're drawing a bolt, which is uh, going to be lethal next turn. But we don't have uh, the three mana to cast all of our bolts this turn. If someone played a needle against my ring and told you in chat what they want to name, would you honorably not activate it? Of course. <laughs> I'm trying to test for that. I'm trying to test. I'm not trying to like squeak out league wins. <laughs> of course. Dude, I I've e I even like when my opponents misclick on needle, I even like let them name the right card and when I'm streaming. <laughs> I'm like I'm pretty good about stuff like that. Um so I haven't played against Forge New yet, but I watched Everos, who's one of my favorite streamers, play Forge New and Hammer yesterday. More, thank you for the raid, hope you're doing well. Welcome, welcome everybody. How'd the coffers build go? It went uh pretty well. Alright, so let's see if they give us a card. I will not be ginger brooded twice. A2 brute. Game three. Yeah, it's weird. It, it'll be fixed soon, I imagine, but right now, uh, if you you cannot name the one ring with Pithy Needle, it's just not in the pool of modern cards for some reason, but you can name it in Legacy. Um, but it'll be, it'll be fixed soon, I'm, I imagine. I, I can't imagine it's not, like, the easiest fix ever. Spike with the Shakespeare. Yeah, American Shakespeare education is behind the chilies. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and you get free, free drinks after 5 p.m. if you complete it. Uh, so I was definitely all about it. It's turn one of modern, so I'll cast a Ragavan. Paper, are you allowed to name cards that are real cards but not in the format? Eh, I think so, yeah. What's my go to drink? <laughs> uh, margarita, hold the margarita mix. I got kind of drunk with uh, Spider Space in Dallas. We went to, uh, to dinner. Maybe he can tell you. I think we're going to play Tron next if we have time. Depends on like how... <laughs> Depends on how uh, long this takes. Alright, since my opponent's you know, in the tank, I have a funny clip. Since we're talking about margaritas and my opponent's in the tank, the only time this clip would ever get played. Uh, me and Esther have, are quote this all the time. Well, the clip is actually maybe not on YouTube. 
No, I, I can't find it. It's There's this old lady from 90 Day Fiancé who's like, she's in Peru or something, and she goes, I think she's in Peru. She goes, do y'all have any Texas margaritas out here? And the uh, <laughs> the waitress is like really nice. She goes, oh no, we have tea and we have coffee. And she go, and then the lady goes, y'all don't have any absinthe or nothing. And it's so funny that she goes from like margaritas to absinthe, which is like crazy hallucinogenic liquor. And then and then and then it the, the, it cuts to her going, it's a desert for margaritas out here. <laughs> it's a desert for margaritas out here. Me and Esther quote that all the time. I guess we're gonna get a Shadow Spear. Yeah, Ranch Waters are pretty good. Absinthe gets a bad rap. I think I tried, I tried it this year. I can't remember. <laughs> it's probably a bad sign. I can't remember where it was, but I, I, I do know. But I tried it this year. <laughs> Absinthe isn't hallucinogenic. Maybe, I don't know why I've been told it was. Maybe that's just like a, you know, urban legend or something. You can power conduit, red and six emblem for infinite damage. Yeah, I just need infinite turns too. Okay, so my opponent has a um, protection spell, I imagine. But I'm going to go ahead and just do this now. We have more Haywire Mites in the deck. A legend made up during Prohibition. That's kind of like a fun... Little tidbit. Fun fact. Probably good that it's not anymore, huh? <laughs> so if they have another hammer, I die if I crack my fetch, so I guess we'll just go Rin and Six Ping the Midmight. So work, I think the 31. Glad you're liking the stream still. It's been a long time. They exile my Alpine Moon. Okay. I think I'll go ahead and crack the fetch. Draws have not been very helpful. That being said, we get to grow the Ragavan. Wow, Gingerbread's actually a really good <laughs> really, really, really good hit. To go block sack, gain three. So you go to 13, gain three up to 16, and then you can gain five up to 21. Like, you know, a little short of of this, I guess. Is the Midnight mispronouncing an inside joke? Uh, yeah, yes. Yes. It is. How clever of you to catch on. I mean, if they have a uh, March of Otherworldly Light plus Hammer as their last two cards, good beats. Um, I don't know what we can hit. Like, it has to be like a March, right? I guess I can play another Ragavan, move the counter, or move the Shadow Spear over to Ragavan, but then I'm dead to their Shadow Spear, right? Like, exactly dead? Oh, maybe that's enough power toughness. All right, so move this here, three. We're soaking up three, gaining three. Yeah, I think that's enough to be like just a Shadow Spear. Don't have a companion. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get it now. <laughs> I think I forgot about Giganta, no way. Fighting hard, fighting hard. Okay, can I keep my sh Sentinel in play if I want? I think I, I can, right? I just I only have to jump with Ragavan. I can go up to 13. Yeah, we're, we're alive. For now. Down to 3. We draw the One Ring, Haywire Mites. Another Saga. Okay, well next turn we get our Haywire Mite. Can we make it to next turn, though? I don't know. So I can't, I can I make a construct Giganta and equip Shadow Spear? I think I'm exactly one mana short. 
How big is the construct? The construct is 5-5. Five five. So same size Gigante would be. So 5-5 five five Gigante with the Shadow Spear on it. Um, I guess that actually just like completely negates one attack, right? You can, you have 8 mana. But I have to, no, I have to tap the Saga. So if I go tap Saga, I'm too short even. No, you can't, you can't trigger Urza Saga early with Power Conduit, unfortunately. 6-6, six, six, I'm 7-7 seven, seven with uh, Power Conduit. I'm talking about Ren. I'm talking about Ren. What, are we, what, are we, what does Ren have to do with this? I already played my land. I know I, I know I can peel a counter off the Ren. Remember we tutored the Shadow Spear with the stolen Stoneforge Mystic? This has been a funny game. Maybe also jump with the Giver. Or sorry, with the Sentinel. So block like this, block like this. I stay at three, right? Just dead the Shadow Spear Cover Contract? No, we just jump, block, right? Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, then they get pro red. Never mind. I think uh, removing a counter for Rin is worth one life, though. Why not Saga token to save Gigantha? Because Gigantha is five mana, Saga tokens are three mana. I just, it's more. It's better to be more mana efficient. Uh, now that I have power conduit Urza Saga going, I have I have no real uh, problem uh, with uh, for finding mana sinks. Well, that's a punt. I'll just haywire might on your turn, opponent. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna make two tokens, equip spear, activate might. EN1? I don't think so. It could be fine. I, losing my Shadow Spear, like, before I get to gain any life is pretty bad. If you Shadow Spear. Oh, yeah, you Shadow Spear turn off the Surge. That's funny. Does Pro Colos not win for them? Nope. They can't have a hammer on the construct and uh, attack me with Pro Colos. So. When you go get food, can you get me too? Yeah, I, I'm gonna be, like, a couple more hours, though, so. Well. Yeah, maybe order something. If... How dare you tell me? problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe starve and don't drink any water all day. Why are you dark as hell though? I, I uh, don't tell nobody, nobody, no, literally no one has noticed I don't have the light on today. <laughs> it looks so, <laughs> the shadow. It looks weird to you, but like on screen it's I think fine. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah it's, I mean it's it's a little bit better like this, but it's, <laughs> it's sometimes nice just not to have like a light shining in your face all day, you know what I mean? Okay. Bye. You can give pro colors. Yeah, you can, but the hammer falls off is the problem. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Just gonna make the construct as big as possible to get a, as big a swing as possible here. <coughs> but four sneezes? I feel like four sneezes is bad luck. Any luck experts? I guess it's better to kill the giver. I'm not really sure how they went from here though. Yeah, crazy that stabilize. I know, especially like I didn't draw. <laughs> it was a that was. A, I mean, my opponent did make some mistakes. Maybe it was a tough game to win, getting so, as flooded as I was. I think I'm trying wondering it on that. So yeah, I mean, I think that that's just like one of the more obvious shells for it. So I kind of wanted to play the fun ones first before boring Omnath grinding. But I I do think that the wondering will will be a big hit there. I don't know. Maybe a little bit. People are probably excited for it, huh? Uh, the key and the power condo are looking really bad with no saga and no ring in our hand. We have a Ragavan on the play. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, doesn't this player just play like mostly mono red though? 
I think they play mostly this deck. So keeping a hand like based on Ragavan is like <laughs> prob probably actually just a well again. Oh wait, I already kept. Never mind. <laughs> Let's keep actually. It's a good hand to keep. Maybe on something else. Oh, cool. Something with Urza Key Conduit Ring. Um, yeah, I mean that's kind of like what we're doing here. Obviously not exactly. But like we're kind of just choosing to not play an extra four drop and be base red instead of base blue. But you could do something in like a more blue focus shell with four mana Urza. If you felt like that was good. Um I drove the ring, I'll be sad I cast the channeler, but there's a I think a high enough chance I can get delirium and attack next turn. But I should play this. Humans humans is a pretty good deck. Um I'm super surprised to see it. Wait, is Electric Bob the YouTuber with like the really, really good like editing and thumbnails? I think so. I think I'm subscribed. I'm gonna keep a ring. Wow, no blocks. That's so good for me. <laughs> Working on a Flame of an Orsha with Asmo. I wouldn't recommend playing those two cards together. Like, if you're gonna play Asmo, you need to maximize Asmo. You need to maximize the food synergies, which Flame of an Or doesn't do. I think you've recognized that, like, Asmo is kind of like the only other playable wizard besides, uh,. Besides Snapcaster, and Snapcaster is kind of bad, so you want to so you want to play with Asmo because you like Flame of Anor, but I I wouldn't recommend uh, the idea. <laughs> Taking six. Kind of weird if my opponent chomps. I would not expect them to here. Protection from everything! And, uh, Chandler. Oh, and a key. <laughs> Try to think if I'm supposed to be. Managing my life total here is weird, but I do get to manage it with the cat conduit. Um, I think. Really notably, like be getting the getting the Ragavan up to enough power to kill to beat the champion in combat would be nice. But if it's a five power creature, I don't know for how often we're able to do that. Yeah, now and now we're maybe looking for another ring to fog for a turn. We'll see. We'll see. I think I think I'm gonna take the just take the one and then. Oh, <laughs> play testing if it's bugged. I take one. Draw two. Draw three. So let's go Chandler, Chandler, Ridden Six Ping, Thales Lieutenant, and pray for Delirium, I guess. There's Delirium. Another Chandler, doesn't seem so bad. Seems pretty good, actually. And then I'll, I'll definitely be peeling a counter off of um, the ring to put on one of my creatures here. So chumping with... I think we chump with a channeler. This way we have the Ragavan as another blocker next turn. And then we'll put a counter on this channeler so we can kind of use this one to race. Um, and then, I think taking two is okay. So we could draw, like, up to seven cards here. We maybe just win with burn, also. So right now I have eight damage. Yeah, let's just go ahead and see if we draw, like, two more burn spells and the four cards. Drew one more burn spell. I mean, uh, we could do something besides... Oh, I, I have an extra point of damage. Oh, I have a ridden six ping, too. Hold on. So I have... This is seven, eight, nine... 13, plus another, yeah, I guess I just have lethal. I could also fog with the ring if I really needed to. 
Just uh, yeah, just play the ring is also a win, but like yeah, d double double ping is lethal, and they're they're humans, so it's not like it's not like playing around anything makes sense, right? And this is kind of the idea of the deck. Like, when you're going off, you just draw a lot of burn and burn them out. Yeah, that mana type yesterday was so funny. They were playing Mox Ember, so you got Monkey Ring. Yeah, Mox is kind of bad. Kind of like a bad card, but... Uh, maybe in a different metagame, or like a slightly different build with like Breach Combo. So I want these cards. We just like cut the fables. Fables is pretty bad against these kind of like tribal decks. You cannot take combat damage. You play the ring. Yeah, after you play the ring, you take no combat damage. So that that was also like you know almost definitely a win. Right. Peanut one ring and timeless amulet. Um, I really wish that this cast trigger wasn't part of it. The protection if you cast it. So it'd be so cool if you could play Storm the Festival with it. Um, the fact that you can't. I don't know. I, I don't know, like, if it... I don't know if it fits in the deck. Like, it's kind of slow. You know what I mean? It's kind of slow in a deck that is trying to kill your opponent on turn three. Like, in, in the A-key deck, it's not slow, because you just get to untap it with your keys. But it's a, it's a different dynamic here. Yeah, the ring also protects you from Archon of Cruelty's trigger, which is a big deal. Does great in Gigantic version of Escape? Maybe. I don't know. Like, again, it's a... It's... What just happened? What does this do? Dawn of the New Age enters the battlefield with a hope counter for each creature control. At the beginning of your end step, remove a hope counter from New Age. If you do, draw a card. Then if it has no hope counter, sack it, you gain four life. So two mana, gain four life. Okay, resolves. Bug? No, it seems like... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. <coughs> I don't know where that came from. It seems like that was what they're trying to do. Two mana, draw a card, gain four. I mean, so, like, if you have more creatures, you draw more cards. Can I get mounted adding a Sokin Sun? Ah, uh, you can, yeah. That'd be fine. Name's Lightning Bolt. Makes sense. In the, the ring, yeah, we just kill this the bolt for one mana. It does make the ring activation cost two more. Side humans for Horn of Gondor, yeah, I, I mentioned that in my video. Uh, maybe, maybe it would be really, really cool. Oh, seems pretty good. I think I'm content enough to just make a saga token though. Wait, this isn't a human. What the hell? Surely, hold on. Archon of Emeria in your humans deck. I guess there's not. A, is there not a human with the rule of law? Maybe there's not. Horn of Gunder gets out of control fast. Yeah, I would. I would believe that. Can't pay two for it to enter untapped because of the Archon, but I will just... Tr I guess maybe equipping onto Ragavan could it could have been maybe better. Death in Texas the whole time. I mean, they they played Champion of the Parish and Thalia's Lieutenant last game, and they're they're playing Secluded Courtyard and Cavern. Aether Sword Canonist, but only for non artifact. Yeah, it's pretty bad in the like you know Shardless Agent format, right? Uh, if I put a Vials in. Thali's lieutenant and gets like a trade here that's fine. Maybe just a bluff attack. Oh, Reflector Mage the other construct. Okay, that's pretty good. So why don't we equip Ragavan, trade Ragavan for a Reflector Mage, and just rid and six back the Saga, play Saga tapped. Be at a nice juicy 20 life.
The other copy... Only one spell a turn, so I guess I choose... Channeler as that spell for turn. In response to my written 6 plus 1, my opponent vials in a General Kudro to exile my Arid or my Bloodstained Mire. Welcome to Modern, Spike. What is that? 7 life, no cards in hand. Got a Pirate Spell Bomb. Whoa! They get to- oh, oh my gosh. They get to name Urza Saga. No, I can't activate it. That's sick. Never seen that. And now Dawn of the New Age ain't looking so bad, is it, huh? Opponent's dead if they attack with both Archons, though. Let's see if they notice. It does notice. So I guess I'm not activating the Saga. It's a pretty good. Pretty good draw, though. This game is gonna end how it was always destined to end. Manifold key, unblockable, plus galvanic blast. Just a normal modern game. Always how it was destined to go. Wait, did the Galvanic Blast deal three to four? Why did it deal four? Oh wait, was my opponent at four? I thought they were at six. I don't know. I thought for sure they were at six. They're at four. I don't, okay, I don't know why they're at six. Okay, whatever. Okay, prediction line for one prediction. Oh, thank you, Beagle. Yeah, I've been trying to find I was trying to find this clip earlier. Oh, open open TikTok on browser and everything is like Log in? You want to log in? You want to link your account? You want to sign a deal? To, you know, I don't know. Okay, this is this. I, I already described the clip, but. Hi. Do you have any Texas margaritas? Any Texas margaritas? <laughs> oh, I forgot that that I always I always thought that they cut to her and they and it was like a cut and they cut to her and then she's like, "It's a desert for margaritas." No, she just says that. <laughs> she just says it right there at the moment. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Any Texas margaritas? I'm I'm from Texas. I don't know what a Texas margarita is. Does anyone know what a Texas margarita is? <laughs> so yeah, me, me, and, me and Esther are always like, you want to get some Texas margaritas? I'm going to play, this is going to die to a burn spell. I think I still play it turn one. <laughs> Mountain Dew and tequila. Just margaritas but bigger. Yeah, maybe. Oh, it's living in. Well, I guess we got rewarded. We beat living in in round one. We got very lucky. Glamdring? Uh, which one was Glamdring? Is, is it, if it's the one that makes the spirit tokens, I don't like it so much. Oh, for each, yeah, the problem with, <coughs> the problem with this card is it's like, it's basically just the blue-black sword. It's like, almost like identical to the blue-black sword, but, um, but instead of like, it, it, it has the same problems though, where you're like a stone blade deck that needs to somehow have a ton of instants and sorceries in the deck. And it's like, it's kind of impossible to just like, like, where, where are all of these instants and sorceries coming from, is my question to you. What do you think of Living In for the PT? Beats Rhinos and Creativity? Yeah, I think Living In is, like, quietly a great choice, or maybe loudly a great choice. I will say this, though. Like, as soon as I stopped playing, like, tons and tons of just random brews on stream... Oh, they're doing this so they can get their, their Fury back. Why well, get my Ragaman back now? Although, I guess it dies to Fury. Uh, now that I've stopped playing just like nothing but random brews on stream, I've been I've been beating uh, <laughs> I've been beating creativity more often. Deadshot Minotaur making its way back in the list is interesting. Maybe with more of like this red and green base, right? I mean, 
It's kind of the only card in my deck that does anything. Alright, game two. Alright, so bring in the Graveyard Hate and then one Might for possible ley lines. Um, I think I'm going to cut a Power Conduit and two Ren and Sixes like I did last time. Quick Submit. Higher end Ratchet Bomb than E, Y, E here. Um, mostly because we're, like, not wanting to bring in... Um, like, like one, like, you're going to be wanting to uh, crack these effects for zero for zero less often because we're a deck that's playing Urza Saga. Um, you want to be able to, like, play it on one or two and pop it immediately instead of uh, play it on zero and pop it. Obviously, you can still do that with explosives. But I, I also like more specifically wanted Cyber Card for Hammer and Rhinos more so than like Creativity Hammer Rhinos, which is when you want the Ratchet Bomb. Like Explosives is better against Rhinos and Hammer, but worse against Creativity. Also, Fury in Living End looks great. Maybe it's just because I'm playing a deck that's soft to it, but I feel like I've barely ever seen this. And like you know, shout out, kudos to my opponent for. Uh, Trying it out here. It looks it looks very, very good, and I imagine it solves a lot of problems that Living End has. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. That, that, that must be why the Deadshot Minotaur for Fury. I probably should have realized that a little bit earlier. Do you think Yogg is a good deck to learn for upcoming RCQs? I, I think Yogg is a great deck to learn for RCQs. It takes, takes a lot of time to learn, but one that I do think is good to learn. Who would have thought adding Fury to your deck is good? Yeah, for real though. <laughs> so I, I'll say this, like you're like when you're trying to like think about innovations and like doing stuff in modern, it is like basically always the stuff that seems the most obvious that's the best. Anything that seems really obvious in retrospect is ends up being the best uh, thing. Just like in a month, everybody's gonna be saying, yeah, obviously, obviously the One Ring is better than Odd Math. Duh. Everyone knows that. <laughs> okay, I guess because I have two rings, I can, I can go to combat before casting a spell. Okay, they have Violent Outburst plus Force again. GG. Generous Int? So I guess we wait on the card draw? No, we, we want to draw now because we can draw Graveyard Hate. Assuming this doesn't get forced. Also probably just pinging them. Have any of my one ring variants stuck out to you as nope, this isn't the shell? I mean, I've only played, this is like my third variant. It was insane in the eight key. You're always play four there. It was very good in the coffers deck too. Um, for right now, I'm, I'm, I am I'm would definitely play the deck again, maybe with a couple tweaks, but I liked it there. And then, you know, we're three and one with this deck. This is like maybe the most dubious, but like this, I think the idea is cool here. And the card has, I think, been good. Okay, this is their instep. What is this? It doesn't look like a violent outburst. Okay, that's it? That's fine. You ever just don't draw your cascading? Technically, I have lethal. And I, I, this is also something that to me was like pretty experimental the idea of just. I'm just gonna like draw a bunch of burn spells when I tap the one ring sometimes. Or, or when, when I tap the one ring, I'm gonna draw a bunch of burn spells because I have eight of them in, in the deck and I'm gonna draw a lot of cards. Okay, we still have lethal. Also, like, this card does not get destroyed by Force of Vigor. Like, I just can't tell you how many of these artifact brews are so soft to Force of Vigor. And this, like, it helps so much. Although, removing the One Ring is also, like, not the best answer. Countering it so much better. Chase with the Switch Prime. Lord of the Two Munch. Thank you, thank you. Is the Four of One Ring just, like, I get some value, then Legend will reset it? Yeah, the, the, one, the fact that the One Ring is a Legend, it, it's, like, literally just upside on the card. But I think, I think most decks will want to play Four, because you do want to Legend rule them pretty often and get protection from everything again. They're, like, weirdly good in multiples. Remove the Ring in response to tap ability, then draw Zero. Um... I guess you could if you ever wanted to draw zero. That's kind of funny. I guess that would happen if your opponent like flashes a notion thief or something like that. Okay, we got a Ragavan. We're gonna keep. We got Saga Power Conduit. Maybe a little slow with no graveyard hate. We could potentially play Urza Saga turn one. 
I think with my opponent showing me all those force of vigors, I'm going to do this instead. Maybe it's a little slow, but that's okay. I think a lot of people are underestimating how much damage the ring does. I'll say this: I've been playing Run Ring like nonstop for two days. I don't think I don't think I've died to the damage once. Um, there's been a couple spots where like I'm playing the mono black build and I'm like I'm coming close to dying, but then I draw like four cards and one of them is like a Shieldred or a March or like you know a way for me to gain life or just kill them. Um, I think that I think that like if you're playing a deck maybe like blue white control, the life loss is going to be a bit more problem but right now it hasn't felt like that oh overestimating oh yeah i agree <laughs> what is conduit for it's it so power conduit with urza saga is a really cool combo where you get to respond to the third chapter remove the lore counter from urza saga put a plus one counter somewhere and then you just get to keep it around forever um getting getting a new tutor target each turn which is a pretty powerful interaction and we beat an int an only font and an architects of will. Maybe not, but we won't have to. Just beat those at least. Next turn we get some graveyard hate of the saga, so they have to living in next turn. Rise of the Witch King alongside persists. I uh, I cannot tell you the text on Rise of the Witch King. But maybe you can tell me. <laughs> what is it? What is that? What is that card do? I feel like playing Fable here. If I need a, if I need, if they, if they go Charlotte's Agent and I feel like I need another creature, then I can peel a counter off the Fable this turn to get a 2 2. Four mana, each player sacrifice a creature. If you sacrifice a creature this way, return another permanent from the graveyard to the battlefield. Um, I, these like sack a creature reanimate cards are usually not very good, but yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's get a, another blocker next turn as we try for, um, this Urza Saga plan to win us the game, I think. Is there an optimal way to build Living with Grief, Fury, and Force? I don't think you can play... Maybe you can, I don't know. But it's also playing Force of Vigor. They're playing at least Fury and Grief. So Fury and uh, Force of Vigor. I'm sure they have either Grief or Force, maybe not all of them. Okay, um, do I want to put the counter on... Let's see, this will be a... Four four five five six six seven seven potentially or six seven, which is good. It can block this. Yeah, so let's get the counter here. Could get a key. Could be good to get key next turn. Let's just get the the lantern down, I guess. So like, they're not gonna be able to set up for it. We can get we can get the um. Shadow Spirit next turn. Could, well, also, is it better to cast Power Conduit? I guess this is still a 6 7 if I cast this Power Conduit and then I'm able to make. I'm able to peel off the Fable every turn also. I guess that's that checks out. Like the extra blocker every turn feels really nice. And the next turn we can go make a token and equip Shadow Spear. Pizza, 28 months. It'll be so weird if I beat Living End twice, because this matchup has got to be like one of the worst ones. And I will not be beating Living End twice. Well, maybe, I don't know. Game two. We draw the ring. <laughs> this has Trample now. This is, maybe, maybe I'm just at the board, 15. I guess it's best to. Oh, this is a one two. So yeah, never mind. It's best to just chomp here. Go to three, and then yeah. Our, I don't think our shadow spear stabilizes us at this point. So I, I guess if I'm just drawing to the ring, then I actually want to. I want to draw with fable to dig further for the ring. So let's let's do that first. we failed to do we did draw galvanic blast so i can go i can go make a saga token equip shadow spirit but and then not have enough mana to galvanic blast make a saga token plus one counter i don't think this this is a bit big enough 
Soul Guide for the redraw. Uh, maybe that was, I, I, missed, I forgot that I had access to that. So this is, I mean, I can block here, gain seven. It's just not enough. I, if I had one more mana, I think I survive where I can go Galvanic Blast this and then equip the Shadow Spear. Right now this is a, it's, I get gain seven up to 10. Then take uh, a lot more than 10. Yeah, so let's see if I would have drawn the ring off the lantern. Oh, well. Never mind. Okay, let's play the Tron deck. Play the Tron deck. Kind of rough to play against Living in twice. Happy enough to beat it one time. I know Tron, kind of boring, but it's it's also like like very obviously a shell for the